Yes, good evening. We're back in the car. We've just had a Maccas, Nottingham Forest, zero. Tottenham, two. A game which, um, let's be honest, at the times we were sitting there and was like, we're on the ropes a bit, but we got the win. Um, same lineup against the Newcastle game where we obviously won 4 1 in an attacking masterclass. That game was at a lot of talking points a red card, um, a Johnson injury. Your doggy uh, fifth yellow card, which means he will miss mm. uh, the next game. A clean sheet, a Kulu masterclass. He got um, the goal and the assist. But where do we start? What did you make of the first kind of like 45 minutes? Yeah, I think it's a game of two halves, mate. If I'm entirely honest, um, I thought the, 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 the starting 11 was, was, was bang on as I was expecting. But from the get go, it felt very reminiscent of like Wolves after the first five minutes we couldn't get hold of the ball I thought Nottingham Forest set up in a really uh, in, a, in a really clever way I think they kind of dominated the midfield and I think that they pressed us uh, unbelievably well from, from where we could sit it's always very difficult to kind of absorb it you know I will say this so forgive me if I'm saying things that didn't come across on the TV but um, I don't think we played well in the first half at all I think it was very nervy I think the, the, the crowd where we were were quite nervous lots of groans lots of mistakes that were you know that were irritating some of the fans and then you know we get the breakaway and, and we, we, we're clinical with the finish shout out to Richie you know like I was saying to you before I might not be I am still right on Richie but I'm just not right <laughs> right now on him congratulations <laughs> like you know he pops up great finish and we he's, go, now, he's now our second highest goal scorer yeah and you know like I hope that puts us in the shop window for a nice Saudi Saudi bid in January but I'm only joking. For, for, so for if, if, if he scores 12, 15 Premier League goals this season, <clears throat> do you still want to sell him in the summer? No, I just don't. I'm not a massive fan of the player. I, I don't. I, he's had purple patches before. But look, it, that's for a different conversation. To be honest, I thought he played really well today. I thought he played really well against Newcastle. So, you know, I'm not going to take anything away. Um, we, we go in at half time 1 0 up. For me, I'm like, how, how have we got into half time 1 0 up? If I'm honest, I thought Nottingham Forest played really well. When they got the goal that was disallowed, my first thought was like richly deserved. They don't deserve to be on the on the bottom end of it. But after that happened, I think Tottenham started to take control. I think Nottingham Forest started to run out of ideas. Shout out to our defence. I thought Ben Dave was absolutely spectacular today. Yeah, another Pe superb performance. Another superb performance. Ben uh, Pedro Porro doesn't put a foot wrong. Udogi, you know, we could see. I'm not sure if it was picked up on the cameras, but we could see that he would looked really, really tired. I think he had like a, a strain in Cut, his calf. Like a calf, I was going to say calf injury. He battled on. Um, but look, I say, like I say, I think that after a while, Tottenham kind of in the second half managed to frustrate Nottingham Forest enough for us to start to feel comfortable. Then we go and get the second goal. Um, and look, I've got to spend a couple of seconds talking about Decky, mate. I think he and he played on the right as well. He didn't play. He didn't play the number ten. Phenomenal. He played on the right, and the guy's got an engine. It's like. I don't know what you, what you call it, 12 cylinders. As you tell like, like, he might be our second highest goal scorer because he's got another one tonight. And might be, he might be on five now, but... It's his, it's his work rate, it's his effort, it's his drive, it's his determination. Obviously, we're going to talk about the bad stuff in a second with regards to the, uh, the, the, the disciplinary stuff, but um, just whilst we're on the kind of the path of talking about great performances, um, Decky was just absolutely sublime. What, what did you think? Yeah, I, 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 when I saw him out on the right, I was like, I always feel that he's best in the in the ten. And since Madison's been out, I thought he was he's been great. But he played on the right, and fair play. He was. I'm going to title this. I've titled my my fan cam a, a Dan Kulusevski masterclass because he was absolutely brilliant. And I said this to him, and I'm going to put this to you. Do you think Kulusevski could play the number nine role? Because he has all the traits for me. He holds the ball up well. He runs in behind. He can finish. He can create. Right, he's relatively good in the air. He's proved that against Man City. Mm -hmm. I think he's the only one of our forwards that can play all three roles yeah. to a high standard. Richarlison's played on the left. He's played on the right. He's proved his best positions through the middle. Son's played on the left, played on the number nine. He can play both. I don't think he can play on the right. Brennan Johnson's best position is on the right. Yeah. I think Dayan can play the number 10. I think he can play on the left. I think he can play on the right and the number nine. And at the moment... <coughs> I thought to myself, the number 10 is his best position. But when he puts in a performance like that, like he did tonight, crossing the ball for Richarlison's, um, Richarlison's goal, and then uh, at the end, he could have had a, could have had his second goal, and he gets his, his first goal in, in the second half. We go 2-0 up. 
It's our first clean sheet, which is brilliant in, in seven games. Yeah. It's a tough place to go. Villa have lost here recently. They've got points against Wolves. Last year, they beat Arsenal. Last year, they beat United. Yeah. It is, it's a tough place to go. But more importantly for us, we get out of there with three points and a clean sheet. Now, we need to get onto the... I don't, want to, I don't want to get onto the negatives too just, much. Just before we do about the disciplinary, just on the Decky thing, I do think that Decky, I, I always find he gets better as the game goes on. He, he, so he grows into it. He grows into it, but yeah, I think I his, his stamina is just head and shoulders above. Three you know, lungs. Everybody, yeah, three lungs, Decky. I think he's got uh, a work rate and a, and a capacity to, to keep going. And when other teams are, are pressing Tottenham, we saw Luton do it. We saw Wolves do it. We saw um, Newcastle try it in the first. When, when other teams go after Tottenham um, and their stamina runs out, much like Tottenham's do when we press in the first half sometimes, but Decky's there. So you know if you can keep him on the pitch, it doesn't really matter whether he plays on the right, whether he plays in the in the nine or the ten. or what, what, I think whatever you do, you've got an outlet. And he's always going to create things late on in game. So he's just a wonderful, wonderful player. Like, I've been frustrated with him at times in the first half of the season when he's predictable during the first half when, when defenders are kind of structurally set up correctly he you know, cuts in and, and does his usual one trick stuff but um, as the games go on you see him coming into his own and like I say just for what it's just before we to, to finish off the disciplinary before we get to the disciplinary thing his and not just his but Tottenham's effort in the second half was magnificent Mm. And I think that, like you say, Nottingham Forest are a very tricky team to break down at home. But I don't really think that Nottingham Forest created too much. Shout out to Vic Vicario. We couldn't see it because most of the, 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 the brilliant saves that apparently he put in were down the other end of the pitch. So it's it they were tricky offside. to see. The three of them were offside. But he didn't know that at the time. But yeah, he still got made a save. So a, a magnificent performance from him. Um, but I don't think that Nottingham Forest, even though they, they huffed and puffed, I don't think they had too much in terms of, you know, like, uh, phenomenal chances and so for that you have to shout out the, the, the back four um, for their uh, for their discipline in, in, in keeping yep. the structure uh, not only that I mean it's it's but we've we've lost Van de Ven we've we've had, we've had a mix shave back four and so far we're, we're kind of riding this wave but on to the negatives of the game mm. we're 2 new up 25 minutes to go or 23 minutes to go and Basuma does a stupid challenge yeah. Now we've got to talk about this because it's not his first red card. I haven't seen it, but I, I, we, we, you know, we could see it in like the boxes. We could look into the boxes and see like a glimpse from the. the when when the they TV. go to the when they go to the to the, the AR, you know, you know, it's a red. Card. And you give the referee no shots, but why? I'm not annoyed that it's a red card. I'm more annoyed at why make that challenge when we're two 0 up. The game is all in our hands. We're we're we're, we're cruising to three points to a clean sheet for our first away win mm -hmm. in a few games. Why do that? And the, and, the, and, the, and the bigger picture is, the bigger problem is, sorry, there's four red cards this season. Yeah. No team in the Premier League has got more than two. And we're on four. Yeah, that, that, plus our yellow cards. Plus your doggy well. is now missing the Everton game. So we go into that the Everton game. second time he's suspended, right? Yeah, so 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 is this down to Poster Cobb? is one yellow card away now from a, susp a suspension. So is Poro. So is Poro. So is it is this down to is this down to I think it's the system, mate. I think the system that we're asked to play, it encourages risk. Right. And we've spoken about this ad nauseum. Not this much risk. No, I get it, I hear you. But I'm just saying that I think that there's the system where you know you're encouraged to pass the ball out. Like in the first half at times we, we couldn't get the ball out and we weren't even trying to. We were trying to pass it around and Nottingham Forest were pressing us and we ended up, you know, conceding throw ins in dangerous areas and with the Nottingham Forest having a guy we can we can launch the ball. I think that the system that we're trying to do, the philosophy that we're trying to put into play, I think it has its vulnerabilities. It has its vulnerabilities in terms of you're going to give up chances that you don't necessarily have to. You might, you know, you might end up sort of losing sloppy goals um, that you don't need to if, if you were to take a philosophy of just clearing the ball sometimes. But I think the other thing that's becoming apparent is this philosophy also uh, leans itself into... Oh, the light's gone off. It leans itself into scenarios where um, our, our midfielders or our defenders sometimes are um, are in two minds what to do, and then, and then in the moment they see red or they they get reckless. But four red cards. Yeah, I know it's not great. I'm not defending it. I'm just saying I think that there's a so, there's so part, part of the reason why it happens is because of the philosophy of the team is is you know. So, you, so you're saying it's uh, a lot of this is on Angie's style rather than 
the players? Because I, I look at it, I look at this two ways. I think I'm not. I'm not sure if if, if you. I, I don't know. I'm speculating here whether or not if you were to look at Celtic, did they have a higher average yellow card or red card scenario than, than other teams? Well, well, you know, on, know, you know, on average, really. on average this season, we're averaging three yellow cards a game. That yeah, is but, but like that's I say, high. I, I think that there's. As you said earlier, what did you say in the ground? You said we're the dirtiest team in the league. I think we are, yeah. But eventually, that's going to cost us. I don't think I don't think we play like we're dirty. No, but in but terms of the volume that, of cards. Yeah, and I think that I think that, that like I say, I don't know. Like, I'm speculating here. You're you're catching me out. You know, I'm highly emotional after a big <laughs> game, so I might be talking absolute rubbish. But and let me know in the comments. Let Henry know in the comments if I am. But I just I've got a feeling. No, that, I think I think you're right with that, the system. That the system. Um, you know, it puts players in difficult scenarios, and they maybe in that heat of the moment, that split second thinking process suggests if I don't go in and clear this, then because half the team are up, are up the top end of the pitch, I've, you've got I've got to commit, I've, I've got, got to commit, yeah. and then sometimes they get that wrong by half an inch, and it ends up looking terrible. But I don't think we're a dirty team. I just think we're, we're you know, there's disciplinary issues. Um, and I think that, that so how, how do we how do we be rock and roll football? Attacking team, but just not this many cards. Because uh, I think I think you have to coach these players. Like these players are four months into a brand new philosophy that none of them have played before, and I think that they're all learning every day. And it's not just about learning what to do with the ball when you have it. I think that at times there's, there needs to be a little bit of mentality coaching to the individuals that sit their positions and kind of go, listen, in this scenario, mate, you have to like you, you have to have a peace of mind. You have to kind of. You have to think more clearly than you are. Basuma clearly is someone that in the first half of the season was playing that monster six and was getting it right. Then he went through that. He had four yellow cards and he got the red card against Luton. And, and, and now we're going to miss him for seven, essentially him for, seven games. Yeah, I mean, it's a disaster. It's a, it's a disaster on paper. However, what I would say is I think Hoybier came on today and I thought he was brilliant in the last sort of 20 minutes. Yeah, he, he did some good. So did Skip. I thought Skippy was really good as well. Oh, really I was good. having a row with the geezer behind me because I was like, what is going on here? Like what? What? What are we doing here? Um, as you can see, right there, there, there is Sim. But yeah, I, um, love you, mate. I, I, I thought we, you, we, we, we had to, take care, mate. Um, I, I thought in that game at times when Skip came on, I was going, why? Why are we bringing on Skip? But he actually was very good in that second half. I thought, apart from one one header where he put right in the air. But I look, also think he needs to learn how to have a bit of confidence in himself. He, why didn't he, he shoot with that chance? Well, he breaks through. He's into the penalty area. He's basically, you know, five feet left of the penalty spot. Maybe a little bit more. Maybe I'm exaggerating that. But he was in the penalty area from memory, and he decides to cross it to nobody. Um, look, uh, um, and I think it was who was it that, who was it that was making the chance? Who was making that run? Sunny, Sunny, I think it was Sunny or Udoggy or someone was at the back post, but they were they were nowhere near. Um, I just think that Ollie Skip doesn't have the confidence to have a crack. It, might have been, if, if it was, Sa it was, Saar. It was Saar, was it? It might have been Saar, yeah. If it was Pedro Porro, he has a crack. If it was Decky, he has a crack. Listen, I'm not going to... It doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter at the end of the day. But we got the three points. We got the three points. But yeah, look, I think that there's a lot of... Unfortunately, at the moment, mate, there's, there's a process with Tottenham, which is... When things go wrong and you lose games, there's positives that you can take out of the performance. You go, if we could get that right, then we don't lose that game. But when we win, there's always something that we've got. Is that, 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 that pulls us back a little bit? Yeah, and right now we've got to worry against who's next up? Everton. And we're going to be without Basuma. No Basuma. No you doggy. Obviously, still no Johnson Benzico. should be sh Johnson should be fine. The midfield no, will probably be Hoiberg, Gio. Hopefully he's back. And skip. Or Saar. Yeah, and Saar. But then if we get something else that goes wrong, it's bare bones. It is what it is. Look, tonight, we're celebrating the win. We've got a long drive home. I'm still uh, supping on the Magnums. This is a, a new... Shout out, Magnum. Yeah, I've, listen. I discovered these in the YouTube community. Thanks to some um, people from Never A Foul pointing them in the right direction, and they're fantastic. But, uh, listen, I'm, I'm really happy tonight, Henry. Yeah, However, me too. there's still lots to chew through. I don't think we played too great. We've got three time. games between now and January. Yep. And that's Bournemouth, Everton, and Brighton. And I said yesterday, uh, I said on Wednesday, if we can get through these next four with, with 12 points and get into January and bring in Tosa Rabio and bring in Jota and then bring in a forward, there's no reason why we can't go top four. I honestly believe that. Injuries and, it, and suspensions are going to be the reason, I think, for us. And, and you know what? Increasingly, it becomes suspensions, not injuries. Discipline. Uh, I think that... 
for it, listen again i want everyone in the comments to let us know whether we're talking absolute waffle about the uh the system being responsible or i'm talking waffle about yep. the, uh, the system being somewhat responsible for some of the discipline but if there's truth to it then that's not going to change right the only thing that's got to change is either the players that we have have to adapt have to figure that out have to become Pete karma of mind that's down to coaching as well yeah or we need to have significant depth and you can sell you can turn a, a negative into a positive by twisting the sales pitch to some of these players by saying look come to Tottenham you know there's a reason why even if you're not first choice that you're going to yeah. play a hell of a lot of minutes plus potentially next season we will be in Europe um, so there's that to, uh, that as well but look we are going to wrap up make sure you get over to Sean's channel there's a plug there's his jumper at Spurs Talk Show we're back with a win um, away from home three points a clean sheet make sure you like the video make sure you subscribe to the channel and as always come on you Spurs, Spurs.